All right, so today we're going to look at 7.6. Okay, this will uh, finish up chapter 7. And this section is on solving equations with trig. Not every equation with trig can be easily solved, but the ones that we're going to do um, are either going to be solvable by factoring, different types of factoring, basic factoring out of GCF, maybe factor by grouping, um, or if we can't factor, they're going to fall into a quadratic type pattern, which means we can use quadratic formula. A couple things to kind of keep in mind when we go through the section. This diagram tells you where certain trig functions are positive and negative. So in quadrant one, any, which is the angles between 0 and 90, all the trig functions will come out positive. If you pick an angle between 90 and 180, that will put you in quadrant 2. And the only trig function that comes out to a positive value in quadrant 2 is the sine. If you pick angles between 180 and 270, that puts you in the third quadrant. And the only trig function that evaluates positive there is the tangent. And in quadrant 4, those are the angles between 270 and 360. And any angle between 270 and 360, if you take the cosine, it will be positive. If you take the sine of the tangent, it will be negative. Now, we also have formulas for the reference angles in each quadrant. Excuse me. Uh, in quadrant 1, there's no such thing as a reference angle. The angle is the reference angle. But in quadrant two, what's your formula to find an angle in that quadrant if you know a reference angle? Yep. 180 minus the reference angle. Yep, 180 minus the reference angle, or pi minus if you're doing radians. What's the formula to find a quadrant three angle if you know the reference angle? Yep. 180 plus the reference. 180 plus the reference. And in quadrant four, what's the formula to find an angle there? Yep. 360 minus the reference. Yep. So it all depends on what quadrant you're looking for an answer in, which usually depends on what trig function you're using, and are you looking for a positive or a negative. So this diagram will really help us quite a bit uh, today. So, uh, some of the techniques I already mentioned to you, we're going to try factoring. Um, you also generally want to write trig function, trig equations with one function. If you have an equation that has mixed functions in it, that's like having an equation with two variables. That's going to be more complicated. Okay, so when we have an equation like this, not good. We don't want to have sines and cosines mixed. That's like writing a quadratic equation, 3x squared plus 5y equals 7. Now you're mixing letters, so we don't, want to, we don't want to do that. And the quadratic formula is something we will also use. So we touched on this a little bit yesterday, but remember, the quadratic formula just doesn't apply to the basic kind of quadratics you learn in Algebra 1. It applies to anything that has a quadratic pattern. Okay, so quadratic pattern, in general, looks like this. And this is even more general than what I said yesterday. You can put, you have to put the same thing in each box. So the basic case that you're used to from Algebra 1 is you see a single variable in the box, and the n is a 1. So that would give you x squared plus x, and then plus a constant. Well, if you had, you know, even keep the variable the same, but let's say you make n2. That's x to the fourth plus x squared plus a constant. You can still use quadratic formula on that. The key is when you set up the quadratic formula, so you're going to have a whole quadratic formula on the right side. What you put on the left, well, I won't even put x. I'll just put this. That's what goes on the left. Okay, so basically, whatever, whatever we're putting in this box, that is what we're solving for. So if you had a problem like, let's say, 
sine squared x plus 3 sine x uh, plus 4 equals 0. That's a quadratic pattern. The n is 1, and the box is being filled in with sine. So when you use quadratic formula on this, you are solving for sine to the first power. That's what would be in this box. Sine x equals quadratic formula. So any questions on this idea? That's a quadratic pattern. But these things have to be the same. You can't put sine in one box and cosine in the other. They have to be the same thing. Alright, so let's look at this one. It says to find all solutions between 0 and 2 pi. So we don't need to worry about putting plus 2 pi n on the answer, or the, whatever the period is times n. Now, is this set up exactly the way I described a minute ago to use quadratic formula? No. No. What's wrong? Yeah, Nick? It's different variables. In yeah. The yeah, you're, you're mixing your trig functions. You're using cosine in one spot, you're using sine in the other. True, this exponent is double this exponent, which always has to happen, and this is a constant, so that's good. But we don't want to have two different trig functions. So what we're going to do is whenever you have a trig function that has different variables and one of them is squared, substitute for the one that is squared. And usually if you do that with the Pythagorean identity, it's going to turn this trig function into that one. So what can we substitute cosine squared with? John? One minus sine squared x. One minus sine squared x. Okay. Any question on that? Now, um, what do I have to do with this 2? Distribute. Yep, I have to distribute it. So I'm going to distribute it, and I'm going to combine like terms. 2 times 1 is 2, plus 1 gives me 3. So I'm going to put my constant at the end. So I got 2 plus 1 is 3. Now I'm going to have 2 times negative sine squared x. That's negative 2 sine squared x plus sine x plus 3. Now, does that look more like a quadratic type of pattern that I described? Yes. Yep, it is. With quadratics, we generally don't like the squared term to be negative. It complicates the factoring if it's factorable. If you're doing quadratic formula on it, then don't, don't worry about that negative. But what could I do to all four of these terms to get rid of this negative here? Yep. Multiply by yeah, multiply every term by negative 1. And we're doing that because whenever you're taught to do factoring, like when you're figuring out your signs, pluses and minuses, you're always taught how to do it when the first term is a positive. Right? So let's do that. So 2 sine squared x minus sine x. Minus 3 equals 0. Now, doing this problem is the same as doing this problem. So what I'm going to do is see if this is factorable. If it's not, I'll do quadratic formula. Right. So it's, I'm just going to put it's similar to that. So let's attempt to factor. What would be your first term in each set of parentheses if you were to factor it? And I'm talking about this one, not 2x squared minus x minus 3. But you can use that to help you. John? That would be 2 sin x and 1 sin x. Yep, so 2 sin x and sin x, just like doing 2x and x. Same idea. What about my um, pluses and minuses? I'll try not to say sines because then you might confuse it with sign. Um, but what about my pluses and minuses? Two pluses, two minuses, or one of each? One of each. Yep, does have to be one of each. 
It does make a difference which one goes where. Let's just try to pick that. And now, two numbers that multiply to give me three. Three and one. Let's try it like that and see what we've got. So if we distribute it out, two sine squared, that's good. That's negative two sine x plus three sine x. What's negative two plus three? That's positive one. Is that what we wanted? We wanted negative one in the middle. So what do I have to do to fix that? Just switch the plus and the minus. Let's try it now. Two sine times one is two sine x minus three sine x. Two minus three gives me the negative one I want for the coefficient in the middle. And negative three times one is negative three. Okay, so it's factorable. Yes? Where did the three come from earlier? Just the positive scale one. The three? Yeah. Um, when I distribute it and combine like terms. Okay. Now, we have something times something equals zero. What's the only way you can multiply two things together and get zero? Yeah, you want? You can multiply zero by number. Yeah, so one of them has to be zero. So either this factor has to be zero, or that factor has to equal zero. So now solve each one of those problems, but these are much simpler problems than what we started with. They're, they're very basic. Usually you can do this at this point, you can usually do it in two, two to three steps. Okay, what would be my first step um, in this one to get sine x by itself? Add three. Add three, and then what would you do? Divide by two. Let's, let's do both of those at once. Sine x equals add 3 divided by 2. What's 3 divided by 2? 1.5. 1. 1. 5. Okay. Keep that in. What would I do now on both sides to get x by itself? Inverse, inverse. inverse sine. So inverse sine of 3 over 2. Now remember, when we solve this, we're looking for where sine equals a positive number. There's two quadrants where it's positive, if this works. So if we get an answer here, we're going to go to that diagram and look up how to get the second answer. And then we'll do the same thing on this one. So let's try inverse sine of 3 over 2. Inverse sine of 3 over 2. I got an error. Why did I get an error? Mm -hmm. Yeah? The domain of sine is negative 1 to 1. Uh, yeah, the domain of inverse sine is negative 1 to 1. That's not negative 1 to 1, so you didn't even need to do this. Uh, this one has no solution from this part. Doesn't mean the whole problem is no solution, just this part. Now, let's do this one. Sine of x equals negative 1. And whenever the trig function is equal to a 1, a negative 1, or a 0, I just imagine the graph in my head. Because 1 is the highest, 0 is right in the middle, negative 1 would be the lowest. So sine looks like this. And, where, and, and whenever it's equal to a 1, a negative 1, or 0, if the answer is always a quarter point, it's either 0 degrees, 90 degrees, 180, 270. So where does the graph of sine hit negative 1? Yep. 3 pi over 2. Yep, 3 pi over 2. So if they wanted the answer in radians, the answer to this problem is 3 pi over 2. If they wanted in degrees, you could just write 270. And that's the only answer to this problem. Pretty rare to only get one answer. Usually you get something up to 4. You'll get a couple answers here and a couple answers here. The reason we only got one answer here, and we don't have to do the ASTC thing, is because this ends up being an angle that's on an axis. It's not in a quadrant. The ASTC chart only applies to angles between 0 and 90, not the 0, not the 90. That's why I handle this special whenever it's equal to a 1, a negative 1, or a 0. 
for sine and cosine. But anything else, I would have just done inverse sine like we attempted to do on this side. Okay, questions on that one? Yeah. Would it have been easier to use the quadratic formula? Um, I'm not sure on that one. I don't. It depends how quick you are with factoring. It depends. You can always use the quadratic formula though. Yeah. All right. Uh, let's look at this one. Find all solutions in one period. So this time they don't even tell you what one period is. So now you got to do the LCM thing. Get through that quick, and then we'll move on. First of all, is that set up to be a quadratic type of pattern? No, there's all kinds of things wrong with this to be a quadratic pattern. What's, what's a quadratic always supposed to equal when you're solving it? Zero. So let's get this equal to zero first. And we have two choices. We could move things to the right, or we could move things to the left. And you might think, well, the sine squared is already positive, and that's what you want. Right? We always want the squared term positive. Everyone agree with that? So maybe it would be a good idea to just leave that here and move everything to this side. No. Move the sine squared to the other side. You're like, oh, wait, why? That's going to make it negative. Watch what happens. So we're going to have zero equals two, uh, negative two, sine squared x. Uh, let's see, the plus cosine stays right where it is, and the plus one stays where it is. Now, it's still not set up to be a quadratic because we don't have all the same variable. What can I substitute in for sine squared? And I'll just put this off to the side. Nick? Cosine squared minus 1. Not quite. So? One minus cosine squared. One minus cosine squared. Now, do people see why I moved the sine squared to the right? What's going to end up happening when I distribute that negative 2? Yeah, it's going to make the cosine squared positive again. So had I left it on the other side, it would have been okay, but then you would have had an extra step later to move to move it, or to divide by negative 1, or however you're going to fix it. Right. So can somebody tell me what I'm going to get on the right side when I distribute the negative 2, and I'd like to put it in descending order so it looks, it looks like a quadratic. Tim? 2 cosine squared x plus cosine x minus 1. So plus cosine x, and then you're going to have a negative 2 combined with a positive 1. Wait, negative 2 combined with positive 1 would be? Is a negative 1. Yes, negative 2 combined with positive 1 is negative 1. Okay, now this one, um, not sure if it's factorable or not. Yeah, I don't think uh, I'm going to have the same luck here. So let's, let's try the quadratic formula. What's A in this case? 2, B, C. And what are we solving for when we use the formula? Cosine x. Cosine x. So we're solving cosine x. That means cosine x equals, now do the quadratic formula. All right. So we've got b squared minus 4 times a times c. All right, so cosine x equals, um, what do we get under the square root? 4 times 2 times 1 is 8, plus 1 is 9. So because we're getting 9, maybe we could have factored it because it looks like we're getting a nice answer. But it's still good to practice with quadratic formula. 
Okay, and square root of 9 gives me how much? Three. Now, let's write out both those answers. Okay, so cosine x, let's just kind of split this into two. Cosine x equals, what's negative 1 plus 3? 2, and 2 divided by 4 is a half. So there's one of them. And the other one, what's negative 1 minus 3? And divide by 4? Okay. So there's our two problems. That one on the right, we're going to handle as kind of a special case, because it's equal to a negative 1. This one, we're going to use the calculator. All right, what do we do on both sides of this one? Inverse cosine. And that's going to work fine because we already know the domain of inverse cosine. It's negative one to one. One half is definitely in that. Let's do it. Let's do it in degrees. So inverse cosine 0 0.5. Inverse cosine 0.5. 60. Now there's another answer here. We're looking for where cosine equals a positive number. Sixty degrees is here. That's a reference angle. Where is the other quadrant where cosine equals a positive number? Yeah? Fourth quadrant. So I want an answer here. How do you get an answer in the fourth quadrant if you know your reference angle? Yeah? 360 minus the reference angle. Yeah. And that's easy enough to check. Just take the cosine of 300, see if you did it right, you should get 0.5, and you do it. If they wanted these answers in radians, we could convert them. Uh, let's see, that's pi over 3. And that's times 5, so times 5. You're not going to be asked to do them in radians and degrees. I'm just trying to show you both. Okay, cosine x equals negative 1. This is a one that I know the answer is on an axis. It's not in a quadrant, so the ASTC thing doesn't apply because it's equal to negative 1. Think of cosine. Starts here, comes down, goes up. Where does cosine hit the low point, which is negative 1? Yep? Pi over 2. Pi over 2. Uh, pi over 2, actually, no, that's right here. Pi. Right? So 0, pi over 2. Pi, 3 pi over 2, 2 pi. So cosine hits negative 1 at pi, which is what in degrees? 180. 180, halfway through the cycle. Yep. There you go. That's your complete solution set to this problem. It has exact answers in degrees and radians. Again, you probably could have done that without quadratic formula, but now you, at least you've seen both. Questions on that one? Okay. So, this, I just want to remind you, we're not doing complete solutions in this section. We've done that before. Okay, when you do complete solutions, that's where you put plus the period times m. We are only doing specific solutions. So we need to go back to the previous problem and check one thing that we probably should have checked before we did all this. Everything we did is right. And th those are the answers. But there's one thing we should have done to, to make sure we had the answers in the right interval. When we look at this, What's the period of sine squared? We need to remember those formulas from, the, from last week to find the periods. Okay. Pi. Pi. What's the period of cosine? Yep. 2 pi. 2 pi. What's the LCM between 1 pi and 2 pi? 2 pi. 2 pi. So that means 360 degrees. So what that means is when they say find all solutions in one cycle, 
you only want to find the solutions that are between 0 and the length of the cycle. So the length of this cycle is 360, and that's exactly what we ended up with without actually checking that first. So we should have checked that first. But all your answers in this problem should have been between 0 and 360. That's what you were looking for. And that's exactly what we did on the last problem, except they told us 0 to 360. So if they tell you this, you don't have to do the LCM stuff. You just do what they say. If they don't, you have to figure out this interval first, and then go through and do your answers. And if you end up with an answer that's not in this interval, cross it out, because they don't want it. All right, so we are not doing the period times n stuff in this section. We know there's infinitely many solutions. Not interested in them. We're just finding the ones in a certain cycle. All right, so here, don't have to worry about the LCM stuff. They tell you from 0 to 2 pi. Suggestions what I do first here. All right, let me ask another question. Does that look like a quadratic? No. no, it is. You won't see it until about two steps from now, but that is going to end up with something squared and then something and then a constant. Or maybe not even a constant, maybe not. I'm not sure. Does anyone have a guess what we should do first here? John? Turn everything the side goes up. Yeah. Okay, so what is tangent if you change it to sine and cosine? Uh, sine and cosine. All right. All right, what could I do next now? Nick? Divide by co. No, wait, no. Uh, so multiply everything through by cosine, and what that's going to do for you is get rid of all your fractions. Because when we're trying to solve a quadratic, we don't want to have variables and fractions. We just want to have variables. So let's multiply everything by cosine. And now watch what happens. You end up with sine x equals 3 cosine squared x. Now starting to look more like a quadratic. What do we always want to get a quadratic equal to? Zero. So what side, or what do we want to do? Move everything to the left or move everything to the right? Everything to the right. Left. Left. You want to put everything to the left. If you're planning on trying to factor, that's the way to do it, because then the cosine squared, this co the squared term is going to turn positive. Remember, we did that in the last problem. If you put it on the right, not a big deal. You're just going to have to fix it if you try to factor it. If you're doing quadratic formula, then it really doesn't matter. All right, so let's put everything on the left. And what's the last thing I need to do to that to make it look like a quadratic? Yep? You have to uh, change the cosine squared to sine. Yep, change cosine squared. And what can we substitute for cosine squared? John? Uh, 1 minus sine squared. 1 minus sine squared. And there you go. Now it's just like any one of the problems we've done before. Let's distribute. Notice we just turned that sine squared into a positive. So 3 sine squared x. Uh, let's see. Let's do the plus sine x. And then negative 3 times 1 is negative 3. All right. Questions up to there. How did you get three sine? Uh, just one sine. No, the first one. Three sine squared? Yeah. Negative three times negative sine squared. Oh, okay. Thank you. So we have to distribute that. All right. All right. Uh, what's A? Three. B? One. C? I negative. And what are we solving for? Sine, sine x. Sine x. All right. So negative b. Let's fill all 
this out. Uh, negative b plus or minus square root of b squared. For a c all over 2a. a is 3, c is negative 3. All right, uh, I definitely had to use quadratic formula on this one because what do you get under that square root? Um, what do you get? 37. Yeah, so 4 times 3 is 12, times 3 is 36, plus 1 is 37. Yeah. All right. So now we have two problems we need to solve. You don't have to write it out like this. I'm just trying to make it clear what we're doing. Plus root 37 over 6. And minus root 37. What do we have to do on each side? Inverse sign. Inverse sign. Let's think about this for a second. What's the square root of 37 pretty close to? Sisters. Bigger, smaller than that? Smaller. A little bigger. So if you take a number a little bigger than 6, 6.1, and you minus 1 from it, you get about 5.1. 5.1 divided by 6, the bigger number is in the bottom, which means this fraction will be less than 1. So this is going to work. So we need the inverse sign. And this is going to be really messy answers. Of negative 1 plus root 37 over 6. This is how you want to type it in. You want to keep everything inside that inverse sign argument. The numerator and the denominator. So you get an answer of 57 point, we'll call it 9, 0. Could we just round up to 58? Um, if they stayed around to the nearest integer, then yes. Generally, they're going to stay it around to two or three decimal places. Yeah. All right. Now, think about, again, what this number was. This was a little bigger than 6 minus 1, so the numerator was positive. The denominator is positive. Positive divided by positive is positive. We're looking for two quadrants where the sign is positive. We got one of them, 57.9. That's a quadrant one answer. What's the other quadrant where sine equals a positive number? Yep. Two. two. What's your formula to find an angle in quadrant two? Let's see. I'm sorry, Maddie? 180 minus 180. Yeah, 180 minus the reference angle. Uh, reference angle, actually, I can just go like this. 122.10. Okay, that part's done. It is our two answers. Now, let's think about this part. Square root of 37 is a little bigger than 6. If you take negative 1 and you minus a number a little bit bigger than 6, you're going to get something like negative 7.1. That's roughly what the numerator is going to be. If you take negative 7.1 and divide by 6, what kind of, what, what do you get? A number that's a little bit bigger than what? Uh, negative 1. A little bit bigger, like negative 1.05 or something, you know, something a little bit bigger. So that's not going to work because the domain of inverse sine is negative 1 to 1. This is not between negative 1 and 1 if you do it out. So if you spend all the time to do it out, it'll probably take you 30 seconds. But you're going to waste 30 seconds because there's no solution. Any question on, on that part? And on a test, maybe you still want to do it out just to be sure in case you're you know, not thinking clearly. But you can trust me, there is no solution from this part. So this problem only had two solutions. You need to scroll back up. Just because of the way we did it, I'm just going to change that. 
because I don't want to go back and do it all in radians. I could have just put the mode in radians and done it that way. Um, but are both my solutions between 0 and 360? Yep, yeah, then I'm fine. Okay. Okay. Questions on them? Uh, this is really more of the same kind of problem. It's you got something squared, you're going to move everything to the right, use a Pythagorean identity, and then use quadratic formula. Okay, we've already done three of them like that. Any questions on this type? Okay, we, I think we even did one harder than that when we did this one, because you had to use the identity John gave us, then multiply through by cosine to even get it to look like that. All right, so let's look at this one. Find all solutions in one period. Okay, I see an exponent, I see another exponent that's half of it. That usually suggests a quadratic pattern. All right, now, when we substitute, what did we say? Because we don't have all the same trig function. What trig function did I say to usually substitute for? The one that's what? Is the bigger exponent or the square root? The square root. That's the one we always substitute for because we have an identity for squares, right? The Pythagorean identities. So we're going to do a substitution. And what do we always want to make sure we get something equal to for, for solving it like a quadratic? Yep. Zero. We want to get it equal to zero. So let's move everything to the left. Again, you might think, whoa, he's doing the opposite of what we want. We want the squared term positive. It will be. And let's put it in descending order. So 3 tangent to the fourth x minus secant squared minus 1. Okay, so better. It's equal to 0. And now we're going to substitute in for the one that's squared. Remember your Pythagorean identity for secant squared? Right there. So everywhere we see a secant squared, we can change it to a 1 plus tangent squared. Eh, I should have put it on the other side because I forgot. This identity, it doesn't, it doesn't have to move something to the other side, which makes it negative. It's already all on this side, so... Uh, probably would have been better to put it on the other side, but we're just going to go with this. We'll fix it. All right, so we've got 3 tangent to the fourth x. Maybe we won't even need to fix it. I, I don't know. Let's see. Minus. What are we substituting in for secant squared? 1 plus tangent squared. Yeah, I, don't, I don't think we'll need to fix it. We can... Just do it this way. So 3 tangent to the 4th. And now distribute that negative. Minus tangent squared. And what's going to be my constant? 0 or negative 2. Minus 1, minus 1. So minus 2. All right. So now um, we are ready to solve that. It would be fantastic if that was factorable, and it is, so we don't have to use quadratic formula. What could I put as the first term in each set of parentheses, so when I multiply them together, I get 3 tangent to the fourth x. John? Uh, the 3 tangent uh, to the second x, and then tangent to the second x. Yep. Now, what about my symbols? Pluses, minuses, or one of each? Yep, you do need one of each. Um, it does make a difference which one we put where. Um, let's just try minus and plus. And now two numbers that multiply to give me two. 
One and two. One and two. Let's check it. Three tangent to the fourth minus three tangent squared plus two tangent squared. Minus three plus two is a minus one, and two times negative one is negative two. Perfect. Okay. Now, what do we do with each of those factors? Set them equal to zero. Set them equal to zero. So let's set them equal to zero and move things at the same time. How would you move this to? John? Subtract it. Subtract it. So it would end up over here. And how would you get rid of this 3? Divide by 3. All right, let's set this one up. This one's a little easier. Um, tangent squared is going to equal what? One. Now, the next step in both of these problems is the same. We want to get x eventually, but right now you have this. If you want to think of it this way, this might be easier. The same thing. What would be your next step? Take the square root of both sides, but what's going to happen here when you do that? Yeah, you're getting the square root of a negative number. So the answers to this part would be imaginary, and we're not interested in imaginary answers. So these would be imaginary. We're done with that. So we're going to go to this one. What do we have to do on both sides here? Take the square root. And what's the square root of 1? I need to evaluate that. I want to know what is the square root of 1. one. What did you say? One. Negative 1. 1 and negative 1. So that causes the problem to split over here into two things. So now we have tangent x equals 1 and tangent x equals negative 1. Does anyone remember what angle you can take the tangent of and it comes out to 1? If not, you can take the inverse tangent of both sides, but it's, it's a nice answer. Yeah? It's a 45. Getting ahead of myself there. So x is 45, or pi over 4. And what angle could you take the tangent of and get negative 1? Negative 45. Again, if you didn't know that, you can take the inverse tangent on each side. Now remember, the cycle of tangent is pi. So you could add 180 to this number and write 135, if that's what they want. Let's go up and see where they said to write our answers. Do they want answers between 0 and pi? If so, we need to add 180 to that. No, they chose kind of a weird window here. They said negative 90 to 90. So our answers are where they should be automatically. If I was doing this, I probably would have recommended you to choose 0 to pi as your window. But we got what they want. Questions on that one? It's a little bit different, um, but the factoring idea is, is still the same. And you could use quadratic formula on that if you didn't want to factor it, and you'd get the same thing. Just remember, if you use quadratic formula, it would be tan squared x equals, and then do the quadratic formula on the other side. But factoring, I think, is always better than quadratic formula if you can do it. All right, I'm going to do a factor by grouping, and I want to do that one, and we'll probably skip that one. Okay, so factor by grouping. So factor by grouping usually applies to a problem where you have four terms. And the first two have something in common, and the second two have something in common. What do the first two terms have in common? Cosine? Yep. So let's pull the cosine out. 
what would that leave you with in the first term? Two cotangent. Two cotangent. Uh, and then what would that leave you with in the second term? Two cosine. Yeah. Three. Three. Because if you distribute that back out, cosine x times negative three is negative three cosine x. Okay, what do the second or the last two terms have in common? Tim? Negative, I'm at three cosine x. Mm, all I see is a cotangent x. Three? Yeah, oh. just three. So the last two terms, we've already we've done the first oh, two. Oh, yeah, now sorry. we're on the last two. Okay, yeah, sorry. So now we're here. That. So plus three. And if you pull a three out of the first term, what's left? Two cotangent x. Two cotangent x and minus what? Three. three. That's what always have to happen when you do factor by grouping. You have to end up with the same thing in the parentheses. Now, these are your two terms you can pull out 2 cotangent x minus 3. So let's do that. If we take 2 cotangent x minus 3 out of what I underlined in red, what's left? Cosine x plus 3. Yeah, just cosine x. And what if you take it out of the second term, what's left? Plus 3. Plus 3. And now from here, we have something times something equals zero. So what do we do with each of these factors? Set them equal to zero. Set them equal to zero. Or I should say cosine x, sorry. Now, um, how would you get the, how would you get, how would you get x by itself here? Cosine x would equal what? Negative, Negative three. And what would you do on each side? But what do we know about the inverse cosine of negative three? There isn't. You can't do the inverse cosine of a number that's not between negative 1 and 1. So this has no solution. So now we check this. What will cotangent x equal? 3 halves. And now if we had a button for it, what would it be wonderful if you could do on both sides? Inverse what? Inverse cotangent. You don't have an inverse cotangent button. Now what? Yeah? You turn cotangent into cosine over side. You do want to turn it into something, but that, that's a little more complicated than what we want to turn it into. If you know that the cotangent is 3 over 2, you know something else. Yeah? Tangent is 2 over 3. Tangent has to be 2 over 3 because they're reciprocals. Oh, yeah, that's way easier. Now you can do inverse tangent on both sides. Remember, we're looking, we're looking for two quadrants where the tangent is positive. Well, let's do inverse tangent of two thirds and see what we get. I'm expecting an answer in quadrant one, and I got 33.69. Where is the other quadrant where tangent is positive? John? Uh, the third quadrant. Uh, third quadrant. And what's the formula for your reference angle in the third quadrant? 180 plus your reference angle. So it's, it's, it's super hard, but there's a lot of little things kind of going on here. 213.69. Those are our two answers. Okay, any question on that one? So a little trick here, you have to be a little clever to go from that step to that step, and now you know that, that little trick. And I want to do one with a double angle. These are all double angle, but we're only going to do one of them. Let's do this one. 
Now, the problem here is your arguments aren't the same. They have to be the same. Which side do you think we're going to work with and try to fix? Do you think we're going to try to make the right side have a 2 in front of the x? Or do you think we're going to try to get rid of the 2 from the left? Rid of the two. We're going to get rid of the 2. Yeah. How can I rewrite sine 2x? 2 sine x. 2 sine x. Cosine x. And what if we've been getting things equal to every time we solve them in this section? Zero. So let's get it equal to zero. There's nothing squared here, so it doesn't really matter which side you get equal to zero. I would move the less amount of stuff. So let's, let's do it this way. If I do that, um, how would I move sine to the left? John? Subtract both sides. Subtract it. And now, we can kind of do something we did on the last problem. What can I do with that? Take sign. Do what? Take the sign. Yeah, take the sign out. Factor it out. This isn't the complicated factoring. We need two sets of parentheses. This is just taking out a DCF. So take out the sign. And what does that leave you with in the first term if you do that? 2 cosine x, and in the second term, 1. So now you have something times something equals 0. Now you're at the final stage of the problem. What do we do with each of these factors? Set them equal to 0. If we set 2 cosine x minus 1 equal to 0, what will cosine x equal? 1 half plus the 1. Divide by 2. This is a special case. Whenever it's equal to 1, negative 1, or 0, that's where I think about my graph. So they want all the answers between 0 and 2 pi, and I can include 0 if it comes up. So what would my answers be where the sine of x equals 0? Yep. Would be 0 and pi. Yep, so we could do 0 and pi. Gave you radians and degrees. And what do we have to do with the equation on the right to get x by itself? Inverse cosine. Inverse cosine, and we I think we've already done this one today. Inverse cosine of 0.5 is 60. You tell me, what's 60 in radians? Pi over 3. Pi over 3, good. You're looking for where cosine is a positive number. We have quadrant 1. What other quadrant is cosine positive? 4. 4, and your form reference, well, your, what's your formula in quadrant 4? 360 minus the reference angle, which is 300 degrees. Yep, so that's 300. Yeah, I know we did this one earlier, this this part. And what's 300 degrees in radians? Yeah, it's just a times 5, so do a times 5. So when you have a, a double angle, it's not, it's not that much worse. You just do the substitution, and it might end up leading you to a quadratic. Or it might end up leading you to something you can just factor like that. That's, that's 7, 6. Sine 2x equals cosine x. This problem right here would be almost the same thing. We just did. Very, very similar. This problem, well, you definitely a little bit more options there because you have to figure out which which identity do you want to use for cosine two x. Well, it would probably make sense to use the one that has sine squared in it because you have a sine squared here, and then I think you'll end up with like terms. So 
you're not sure what one to use, look at the rest of your problem and see if you can use an identity that has something in it from the rest of the problem. And that's what I would do here. Use the one with sine squared. All right. So those uh, are the problems for tonight. Okay, on 1 through 10, they do all work for you up to, let me just show you, up to this step in every problem. So you don't have to do the quadratic formula or the factor. They take you right to this step every time. So the 1 through 10 are pretty fast. I think the rest of them after that are like what we did in class. You, you got to do the whole thing. So we'll, uh, we'll take a look at that tomorrow. And then tomorrow we'll look at 8.1 part one and then go over what's on the test for Friday.